Sean Boliner and his friends sneak into a creepy abandoned building and head straight for the basement, which is rumored to be the most haunted area of all. It isn't long before their camera equipment malfunctions, possibly from an abundance of paranormal energy, and leaves them stranded in the dark. When their light returns, a spirit with a pale and dirty face is standing before Sean and his friends. It takes a few steps forward and they bolt out of the house screaming for their lives. The overall pacing and the way it was shot makes me think this almost has to be a short horror film. And it looks like it could be someone wearing a mask too, but I wasn't there so maybe I'm being too judgmental. Either way, Sean insists that he still doesn't know what it was to this very day. When four teens disappeared in August of 2008 in Melbourne, Australia, a local search party discovered this found footage in November of the same year near an abandoned hospital. Shortly after, it apparently began making rounds on Australian news outlets. At the start of the video, the boys appear to be cruising down a highway then further down a dirt road. At one point, they exit the vehicle and they think they hear a sound coming from the darkness. In that area, there's so sounds coming. They approach a gate with a sign that says private property, no trespassing. They ignore it. They find a hole in the fence and decide to enter anyway. As they're walking along in the dark, they come across a red substance splattered on the ground. Regardless, they continue on, and that's where the footage ends. A walk into the darkness. They were never seen or heard from again. If you have any info on their whereabouts, please visit missingpersons.gov.au. In this lost tape, some young punks are playing around with a brown paper bag, throwing it at each other before they go to plant it on the doorstep of a stranger. Once it's placed there and lit, one of the punks knocks on the door and races away, while the old man homeowner opens the door to find it flaming there and stomps it out. It probably didn't seem so funny when the men attempted to prank him for a second time. This time, the old man comes after them and they just manage to escape, but the third time's a charm. When the prank is attempted a third time, the man is waiting for them. He peers down through the curtains of the door window, whips open the door to strike the young guy on the head, and then drags him into the house. When the two others go to investigate, they videotape the front hallway, where the old man is seen leaving into the next room. They then head around the outside of the house and into the backyard. That's where they meet their maker. No other information on what happened next could be found. Published by Colby and Ari in January of 2009, the description claims that this lost tape was discovered and shown with permission from the government to warn others. The tape features some teenage boys going to explore their school's basement. As they say, strange noises have been heard coming from the basement. An urban legend has it that a former student dwells there. Soon, they would discover the truth. After the boys wander around in the semi-darkness, they hear a rasping breath of an inhuman creature, and then they see it. <laughs> the creature on all fours attacks. The boys flee, but the footage rolls on. What could it be? A true beast or a student film gone horribly wrong. This gas station CCTV video, released by the Jonesboro Police in Arkansas, looks normal at first, but an extremely unsettling moment is about to unfold. At exactly one minute, this woman taps on the shoulder of a teenager and seems to ask her a question. The teen points to someone at the counter, and then something bizarre happens. So it looks like this girl was waiting for her mother, who is the cashier, to get off work. When some scary lady walks up and grabs her without warning, her mother intervenes and manages to separate the two before anything else can happen. It's frightening to think about what she would have planned to do next if she had successfully taken this girl out of the gas station. Probably nothing good, and the already strange situation only gets weirder from there.
The woman confronts a customer who doesn't know her at all and accuses him of doing something that she clearly was just caught on camera doing herself. She hangs around for a bit longer and everyone is just kind of shocked and doesn't know how to react. She leaves a minute later but not before giving the girl a really creepy wave goodbye that I'm sure freaked her out even worse than she already was. After that, the same woman is seen on CCTV at the nearby Turtle Creek Mall. She walks across the food court and disappears behind a pillar. That's when a woman gets up and runs over to her. You can see the woman has grabbed another juvenile, this time a confused four-year-old. That's when mall security rushes in to apprehend the woman and contact police. On both occasions, the woman claims that she feared for the safety of the children and tried to remove them from the situation to get them away from a perceived threat. But as you and I can clearly see, the children appeared to be completely fine, at least not until she approached them. The fact that she would try this twice in one day shows that she is clearly delusional. As far as I know, this woman is yet to be sentenced and may instead be committed to an institution. After a malfunctioning fan started to disrupt a Cathay Pacific flight, the captain was forced to make an emergency landing and the whole scary event was caught on camera by 25-year-old passenger Ethan Williams. Okay, so we've just had an announcement. We've got an emergency landing. We don't know what's going on, but we've told we've got an emergency landing. Williams started taking video on his cell phone during the scary rundown by flight attendants on what to do if they were forced to ditch in the sea. Flight CX884 was heading from Hong Kong to Los Angeles when a cooling fan began to smoke. The pilot then turned to Alaska's islands to land at a remote military airport. Williams told ABC News, we were getting told you had to take your shoes off and leave everything behind and what we needed to do and where our nearest exits were going to be and making sure we had our jackets on properly. Thankfully, none of the 18 crew members or 276 passengers were forced to use this emergency information as the Boeing 777-300ER landed safely on Shemya Island. The passengers didn't even deboard the plane. Instead, they stayed seated watching movies. As the emergency cooling fan was repaired, the plane flew shortly to Anchorage, where passengers were replaned on another Cathay Pacific Air vehicle, and then flew on to Los Angeles where it landed safely. While this episode of Scary Plane Malfunctions had a happy ending, the experience was nothing short of terrifying. Ignorance is bliss, and sometimes it's best that certain things remain invisible to the human eye. Posted to the Chills Narrator subreddit, by Miss Doolittle Tex. This video was taken at the Haunted Queen Anne Hotel in San Francisco. Originally posted on YouTube in March of 2020, Tex writes, I have been listening to creepy stories and been watching YouTube videos about ghost investigations and experiences since they existed, which resulted in me paying more attention to my surroundings, heightening my awareness. The Queen Anne Hotel has some history. Located on Sutter Street in San Francisco, initially built as a girls' boarding school, the Queen Anne Hotel is said to be haunted by the former headmistress, Mary Lake. Her office at room 410 is believed to be the most haunted room in the building. The uploader of the video booked this room to stay in overnight. In preparation for the stay, she bought a Fleur thermal cam for her iPhone. She duly notes that the hotel is charming as heck and she didn't feel anything particularly unsettling while there. That is, until she thermal cams room 410. She tested out her thermal cam on her husband, on electrical sockets, water lines, and other hot and cold spots. Then she entered the bathroom. Pointing her thermal cam towards the half-closed shower curtain, she started to see a figure in the thermal footage next to her that she believed appeared from behind the curtain. As you can see, there is her own thermal image in its reflection, and not too far away right beside it, another full-sized figure. Could it be headmistress Mary Lake herself? When going through pictures she took of the room, the uploader also discovered this creepy face in the wallpaper. Do you see it? It's almost like the room is watching you. On March 6th of 2015, CCTV video at a bus stop shows a woman walking down Wellington Street in England late at night from a pub. Behind her walks a man who she later describes as having black hair and in his early 20s. 
The man starts a far distance away but quickly gains on her without arousing suspicion. By the time they are out of camera, he is practically right behind her, and yet he remains quiet enough not to get her attention, like he's done this many times before. It's a well-lit street, but that doesn't stop him from making his move. She never turns around and doesn't stand a chance against him. I can't go into detail about what happens next. She survived, but she will never be the same emotionally again from the traumatic events that occurred. The same man is also responsible for committing similar acts on an 18-year-old girl a month prior to this video. I don't think he was ever caught, and no doubt he will continue to do the same thing until he is brought to justice. This happened years ago, so who knows how many others he has done this to in the time since. There's a £5,000 reward for anybody who can help police. The CCTV video is grainy and it happened a long time ago, but hopefully somebody recognizes a clothing article or something. Anything to help catch this maniac before he strikes again. Way of Vlogs is a YouTuber with a hidden talent that he's only recently begun to share with the world, a skill that he says only takes patience and practice to master. <laughs> With a burst of mental energy, he can make a can roll towards him. Or maybe he pushed the table to make the can roll forward and yelled to cover up the noise. No strings whatsoever. As you can tell, see? Nothing attached to it. No magnets inside. So you can see I'm shaking around, no magnets. I personally think it might have been the latter, but watch again and tell me what you see. <laughs> Next, he makes the object fall over without touching it. There could be a fishing wire in his hand, but if so, it should show up easily against his black clothes and it does not, at least not as far as I can tell. He definitely doesn't push on the table this time either. Still, if he could have made the object fall the other way, then it would show he was not using a fishing wire once and for all. I don't know about you, but at this point I'm still uncertain, so I guess people must have been saying he was using a string, because in the next video he holds his hands out to show he is not using one at all. However, as one commenter pointed out, he could have a string wrapped around his toe or something. It does kind of look like he might be moving his foot, but it's hard to say. But when he shows the cup without any hesitation, it makes what he says seem kind of legit. Now just make sure that there isn't any strings or anything involved, look. I'll use my shirt. I don't really analyze many videos like this because I don't necessarily believe in them, but vlogs like this are enough to make me wonder. Give me your thoughts about this subject and tell me if you think this is fake or if he's able to somehow move objects through sheer will. Flickering lights are one thing, but a switch visibly turning off of its own accord? That's a whole other story. Posted to the paranormal subreddit by Nutzack, the redditor writes about this unexplained encounter that his brother caught on camera. According to Nutzack, his brother was home alone, likely checking on his family's dog Oscar, when suddenly the hallway lights started doing their own thing. He recorded the incident as it continued, and this is what he captured. Nutzack states that he lived in the house for two years and has always felt strange vibes but never seen anything firsthand. He writes, Now after watching the video countless times, I am stumped and believe there is something beyond our knowledge happening here. Two switches control this hallway light. Both you can see in the video. One is right next to the guy and the other is at the end of the hallway on the left. According to Nutsack, you can see the light switch nearby turn about halfway down, which, as the Redditor writes, would be impossible to recreate. Next, it flicks off entirely, turning the hallway light off. This one you can see is clear as day. Some are all in with the paranormal theory, but there's always a skeptic among us. And this time, it's Slick Air who states, a combination of loose wiring and a faulty switch can cause this. 
Others in the thread suggest not even faulty switches can flip off of their own accord. What do you choose to believe? There's nothing creepier than finding extra limbs in your home movie. Published to YouTube in March of 2015 by Patrick Cochran, this video of the haunted Hinsdale house in New York will leave you terrified. Located on McMahon Road in Hinsdale, New York, the Hinsdale house runs tours for paranormal investigators and scare fans alike, as it's known to be one of the most haunted houses in the area. The mysterious history of the place includes everything, from an exorcism to unexplainable events and sightings. Some of these events are recorded in the book, Echoes of a Haunting. Haunting is centered around the Dandy family who lived in the home with their kin in the 70s. The family claims a number of spirits visited them during their stay, and they even had a priest come on more than one occasion to perform an exorcism. The house went out though, and the Dandy family eventually fled the haunted place. A number of other families made attempts to call the Hinsdale house their home, but no one stayed for long. The present owner, Daniel Clays, doesn't live in the home, but allows paranormal teams to investigate the home. This video may show an investigation, or just a regular ghost tour. The group wanders through the haunted house in the darkness, which is creepy enough as it is. Then around 2.36 you see it. A strange arm swings into sight in the darkness. What is that? It certainly doesn't look human. YouTuber Tommy Poo writes in the comments, Of all the countless videos I have viewed on YouTube and other social media sites since 2009, this is only the second where I believe visual proof of paranormal entities has been digitally captured. YouTuber Tai Chiman adds, I was involved in the paranormal investigation show as a special guest star at the Hinsdale House two years ago and it has plagued me since with negative activity around me and my home. It seems Tai was certainly not alone in his experience. There's a reason no family ever lasted long in the Hinsdale House. Could you? Me neither. Naya Rivera was a famous actress who once starred in the hit television show series known as Glee. In July of 2020, she went missing, and the sheriff's office posted this video of her last known whereabouts in hopes of finding her. What seems to be a simple boat outing with her son has only raised more questions than answers from her concerned fans. Comment sections are flooded with people who believe something sinister happened on the day of her disappearance, and I wanted to give an analysis on the points these commenters bring up. For example, no one knows why Naya parked so far away from the boat, or why she is unable to park between the lines at 1 minute and 10 seconds. I think it's odd, but not necessarily a sign that something is definitely wrong. Next, when Naya gets out of the car, some people claim that she walks too far ahead of her child and doesn't look back to make sure he's doing okay. They think she is in too much of a hurry and not in her right mind. I think this is a valid point, but there's no audio, so we don't know if she's talking to him over her shoulder to make sure he's okay. He doesn't seem to have much of a problem keeping up, so I think people are exaggerating here. They get on the boat and Naya has enough experience to untie it from the dock and start it herself. She obviously has done this before and seems to feel comfortable enough at this point to go boating without supervision. It's a calm day as they pull away and nothing else seems that out of the ordinary. Yet somehow this accomplished actress does not return. Days later, her son was found sleeping on the boat by himself. His life jacket was on, and Naya's life jacket was found on the boat but not on her body. For some reason, she was not wearing hers. Exactly what happened from there is not clear. The young boy describes being in the water at some point and getting pushed onto the boat by his mother. He turned around and saw Naya disappear under the water with his own eyes. It was the last time he ever saw her. Nobody would discover her until days later, when authorities identified her via dental records. Some commenters are saying that she did all of this on purpose, but from what I've read, she loved her child dearly and would never do such a thing. And as far as I'm concerned, this video does not prove she did anything wrong. This video appears to show a vampire feasting on someone in the middle of a dirt road in the dark of night. The footage is recorded from the back seat of a vehicle as some men come across a body dressed in white and lying unmoving across the road. 
One of the men gets up to check on the body and the camera drops to the floor. When it returns to the road, the man's body is lying there instead, while the red-haired creature pulls up from her feast and starts creeping towards the car. What do you make of this video? Is it real or fake? I'm leaning towards the latter. If you've ever wondered about whether or not planes run into birds as they pierce through the sky, US Airways Flight 1549 responded with a definitive, yes, yes they do. In fact, on January 15th, 2009, when this giant Airbus A320-214 took off from New York City's LaGuardia Airport and flew right into an entire flock of Canadian geese, the big birds almost took out the giant bird in the sky. The collision caused the plane to lose engine power completely, and as this occurred over the George Washington Bridge, they were not near enough to an airport to land safely. Instead, pilots Sullenberger and Skiles were forced to do the unimaginable and land their plane on the Hudson River. 57-year-old Sully Sullenberger was the commanding pilot, having logged nearly 20,000 flight hours and having served as a fighter pilot in the U.S. Air Force in 1980. He's also considered an aviation safety expert. When the plane struck the geese, the pilot saw nothing but big birds, and the crew and passengers heard the collision and saw flames strike up from the engines. Sully noted that both engines were down, and Skiles started running down the engine restart checklist. As as the aircraft climbed a bit but then slowly began to descend, Mayday was radioed in, and Sully originally said they'd be turning back to LaGuardia, but after realizing he wouldn't be able to make it, he considered attempting landing at Teterboro Airport. Again, he realized they wouldn't make it there either, so he radioed to say, We can't do it. We're gonna be in the Hudson. Passing only 900 feet over the George Washington Bridge, Sully told everyone on board to brace for impact, and the Coast Guard was told by air traffic controllers to clear the Hudson and get ready to assist with a grand rescue. This incident could have been disastrous. Instead, it ended with 155 passengers surviving, only some with minor injuries, and all rescued by boats nearby. Can't say the same about the flock of geese, but at least the passengers made it out alive. The National Transportation Safety Board called it the most successful ditching in aviation history, and it's also been called the Miracle on the Hudson. In March of 2013, a woman named Eliza Sherman had her life taken while going to meet her divorce attorney. CCTV video shows a mysterious figure running away from where Eliza was later found. The mysterious person running away is all bundled up from head to toe and has their face concealed in a successful attempt to keep their identity from the street cameras. They seem to be holding something under their arm, perhaps hiding the instrument they've just used to end Eliza's life with. Police are unable to locate any other surveillance video of the suspect and have no idea what they were driving or where they went afterwards. Facial recognition technology was unable to provide their true identity. No one has been identified in over seven years and the case has gone cold. And then there's the subject of Eliza's divorce attorney, who actually lied to police about his whereabouts and was convicted for it. He falsely texted that he was waiting for her in his office when he had actually left long ago. Why he would leave his office early when they had an appointment is a mystery. Unless that is, he somehow knew she wasn't going to make it to the appointment. Though the circumstances are curious, nothing has been proven, and so no suspects, including himself, have been convicted for her disappearance. Some scary videos just stay with you, so much so that you wish you'd never seen them in the first place. This video comes from Ghost Crusaders, published to YouTube in April of 2020. This episode explores the haunted Lechworth Village. The crew's very first haunted location, which they investigated in 2014, located in Rockland County, New York. In a 1921 report, over half of the residents in Lechworth were youth. 328 of the 506 patients, ranging from the age of 0 to 16. This fact may contribute to the negative energy in the village. As many Lechworth staff said a scarcity in necessary supplies, as well as food and water. 
Lex wears conditions were exposed through photographs and media investigations, and although reforms were made in the 1970s due to public pressure, Lexworth permanently closed in 1996. Since then, the complex has fallen into decay. Everything remains how it was left, instantly abandoned. The Ghost Crusaders explores this institution and all its appalling history. The crew notes in the comments, while well, using an SB-11 spirit box, I never thought I captured any EVPs. It wasn't until reviewing the footage for this episode that I heard the voice, and yes, I can hear other voices like multiple people talking, which I do say at one point, but I edited it out for timing, but I can't make out what they are saying. If anybody's in here, I don't know. At one point, the EVP captures a voice saying, So if something comes through, it should be irrelevant. So it's much harder to get interference. So if something comes through, it should be irrelevant. A moment later, the voice pleads, Please don't hurt me. Later, when they are in the bathroom, a voice, potentially from a phantom orderly of the hospital, tells them to sit, as if directing them to do their business on the toilet. Yes. Some of the EVPs mentioned are not very clear, but the female scream that's heard through the spirit box at one point is definitely frightening. Later, their cameras run out of battery, and while they're changing the batteries, the audio of the EVP is still captured. A voice says, leave me alone. At the same time, the investigator who heard the voice in real time, Dan, says he felt a cold breeze on the back of his neck, and he felt someone was standing behind them, whispering into his ear, Would you have the stomach to visit Lexworth Village? Neither would we. Posted to the Skydentify subreddit by Skeljelly, the clip shows a dark human figure floating through a grey sky. The figure is captured rising up and then drifting down towards the roof of a house, where it disappears. Is this a true levitation? What's going on here? Some in the Reddit comments suggest it's Chris Angel, while others say it might be a Halloween decoration hooked up to a drone. Redditor Ipone Pickles noted that this sighting was linked to an event where a police officer in Mexico claimed that a flying humanoid or a Mexican witch went after him. Looking into this theory turned up the story in question. According to Disclose TV, police officer Leonardo Smaniago was patrolling in Monterrey, Mexico when at around 3 in the morning, he noticed a large black object fall from a tree. But before it hit the ground, it stopped in mid-air, appearing to levitate before touching down. The officer said that he turned on his patrol car's high beams. As the figure turned to him and saw that the thing was dressed in a black cloak, with big eyes with no eyelids. As the light beams fell on him, the figure shielded its face. The officer then claims that the witch-like creature pounced on the hood of his patrol car. He immediately sent the car into reverse and called for backup. He fled but lost consciousness at the end of the street, where the first responders found him. The officer underwent evaluations, all of which came out clean. In the wake of his story, other city residents have come forward, also claiming to have witnessed the same strange figure in the area. A couple of additional officers from the Regia police force and public figures noted that they'd seen a levitating figure in the sky prior to this event. Is this figure in the sky something that can be explained away? Or does this story hold water? Everyone is afraid of the Boogeyman, but most people chalk him up to childhood nightmares. But what if the Boogeyman is you? This video, published to YouTube in February of 2009 by dog for man 92 once you see a reflection take on a life of its own, you'll wish this video never existed. The video at first appears normal, a man and his reflection more or less angled accurately in relation to each other, that is, until this uncanny moment where the reflection turns. The look it gives its double is a bit more than unnerving. Seeing this video may make you be wary of your own reflection. 
as YouTuber Sophie Bell notes in the comments. The creepy thing is, unless you are looking at it, all you can see is yourself, so you never know if your reflection is looking back at you. The next time you daze at yourself in the mirror, don't you dare look away. Was this paranormal or a simple camera trick? Either one seems freaky to me. Sensitive sensor lights can sense stuff invisible to the human eye. At least this one can. Posted to the Ghosts subreddit by Spread the Words, the Redditor shares that strange things have been occurring in his grandmother's house. One of these strange things involve orbs that seem to trigger the hallway sensor lights. This happened on more than one occasion. The short clip does show an orb rising into view, and instantly the hallway light turns on. Is this a paranormal event or merely a coincidence? Believers in the paranormal commonly think orbs are light energy that is somehow linked to the spirit world. Skeptics believe they're just air particles, dust, water, or other types of photography backscatter. But how do you explain dust triggering a light sensor? While there are plenty of skeptics in the comments saying this orb is just dust, others are prone to think otherwise. How would dust turn on a light? A narrow knot 369 writes that he would assume it was dust if the motion light wasn't triggered by it. But every time the orb appears, the light turns on. Others observe that if the light sensor was sensitive enough to be triggered by dust, wouldn't the light always be on? Whose side are you on? Just when you thought you were alone, posted to the ghost subreddit by littlebit underscore, the redditor notes that he and a friend on an investigation of an abandoned church in the middle of nowhere, he explains that his friend had gone to the parking lot on the other side of the building. He had stepped out to call his wife, he writes, and didn't return inside the building for another 10 minutes. Didn't even see this footage until after we had left. Creepy as heck. The footage shows a figure's head appearing in the window pane of the door several times, the short dark peering in at him. Some in the comments suggest it's probably just his friend outside, but as the Redditor explains, his friend wasn't in the building. He thinks the figure looks like a nun or a woman that, if you look closely, the face of the figure appears ghostly white. A close-up shot of the face does indeed suggest that appearance. Is this a ghost? A living person? A stranger or his friend? The question is, can there be a logical explanation to this? figure's presence, or are we dealing with the paranormal yet again? As we've seen in past videos, animals often see things that we don't, and sometimes that can send chills down our spine. Published to YouTube in January of 2018 by the Bram Fam, the video starts out tame as the Bram Fam picks up a doghouse from the store. They each go about their day doing various things for the vlog, but once Bram T is home with her daughter, she starts hearing things inside the house. The uploader notes that their dog Milo started acting super spooked, staring in the hallway and outside their balcony. As you can see, the dog appears on high alert, unmoving and staring out into the darkness. He is then captured staring out into the hallway. When Louis finally returns home, Bramty says she finally felt relieved. Do you think this dog was sensing something or someone in the home? Should they, as Bramty suggested, have the house blessed? That way it hopefully be cleansed. Sound in the absence of sight can be seriously alarming. This video shows just how frightening it can feel to hear something you cannot see. Posted to the Chills Narrator subreddit by Camilla Rose 529 The Redditor explains that she and a friend were cleaning a house when they heard this incredible mayhem outside. Yeah, what was that? <laughs> They went out to see what was causing all the ruckus. The sound fills up all airspace outside, though garbled. It sounds a bit like a jet flying overhead. A moment later, however, this terrifying roar blows your eardrums out. Maybe not a jet, perhaps a literal monster. Yeah. What was that? This <laughs> freaking me out. Camilla writes. We called the police and they were unable to give us any information about what was going on around us and never went back to that house again. 
Redditor Paranormal Psychic notes in the comments, There have been multiple eerie sounds coming seemingly from either the woods or the sky itself, usually music, horns, or even screaming. First time I've ever heard growling. Is this a growl? If not, what is it? It certainly doesn't sound human. When you go onto abandoned property, don't expect to be the only one there. Published YouTube by Double Bins in January of 2008, this video will dissuade you from ever entering an abandoned home. The clip shows some adventurers exploring an empty home, or one that they think is empty anyway. The two-story White House appears to be in the middle of the countryside. As the boys approach it, its big empty windows are like empty eye sockets, giving the house an even more sinister vibe. They enter the house, which doesn't even have a door. It's wide open to whomever dares come inside. The place is an absolute nightmare. It looks as though something tore through the house and destroyed everything in its wake. The oven door is in the middle of the living room. As the boys walk through, the one filming scans the roof, which has a window open to the second floor. That's when they see they're not alone. A figure passes by in plain view overhead. The roof is off. Dude, oh my! Needless to say, the boy who captures it on film immediately flips out, and they both race out of the house and across the field. Whether ghost or human, this is definitely something worth fleeing from. On October 27, 2018, a 26-year-old post office worker named Kiera Coles went missing in Chicago, and her disappearance has never been explained. A neighbor's CCTV camera shows Kiera is about to head to work in her postal uniform, but instead of walking to her car like usual, she instead walks up and down the street, passing by her residence two times before crossing the street and disappearing for good. Pacing back and forth in front of her house indicates that Kiera was in a state of confusion, if not distress. Nobody else is seen on camera, but I think she could have felt watched and didn't want someone to see where she was parked or where she lives. Kira later calls out of work at the post office, which is weird considering she was dressed and ready to leave, and she is never found or heard from again. Her friends told authorities that they didn't think she would disappear on purpose and hadn't been acting strangely lately. She was pregnant with a child and unlikely to do anything out of the ordinary or leave unannounced. To further add to the mystery, her mother searches Kiera's car later on and finds her daughter's purse and phone are still there, but her keys and wallet are missing. I think it's possible that Kiera was forced into a car by someone and made to drive to an ATM to make a cash withdrawal, which would explain why her wallet was gone. And if she intended to go to work, then it's only logical that her keys would have been on her too. Police suspect foul play and are offering a reward of $46,000 to whoever can provide more information about her whereabouts and help bring justice to her and her family. They've run out of leads and thus far, no one has stepped forward to supply them with more information. I'm hoping on the off chance that someone out there knows more. After locking up his shop, Brompton IGA store owner Norm Hurst found a box of fruit snacks in the middle of an aisle clear and away from its original position. This led him to check his surveillance footage, which has revealed the previous owners may not have been too far off. Hearst told the news that they had warned him that the shop was haunted. Being a skeptic, Hearst thought nothing of it at first, but then odd things began to unfold, and the CCTV footage reveals just one of them. The video shows the packet of fruit roll-ups was thrown quite hard to land where they were found on the ground. No one was in the area when this occurred. In fact, no one was in the store. The incident happened shortly before midnight, when the store was empty. Well, there's a three-minute time jump in the video, from 11.27 to 11.30 p.m. This may be due to surveillance cameras only recording when detecting movements. Paranormal detectives were called in to investigate the matter. The box appears to have been thrown with force into the center of the aisle. At least one paranormal investigator. Jessica Pulverenti believes the footage is genuine, noting that no strings or wires appear to be involved. The store owner himself thinks it's all a bit of a laugh. It hasn't done anything nasty, he says. The ghost has a sweet tooth. He can only hope it stays that way. 
Remember when you were younger and you heard the twinkling song of the ice cream truck calling all the neighborhood out for a sweet treat? Well, would you have come running if it had sounded like this? YouTuber Sean Bob Guy published this clip in June of 2008, writing that this demonic ice cream van shows up every single day at his apartment complex. The thing always scares his cat. The cat is probably not the only one with hair on end. Usually parents tell their kids if strangers offer candy to run like cat, particularly strangers in white creepy vans. Well, this scenario isn't too far off. The ice cream truck's tune sounds nothing short of creepy, giving it a distinct horror movie vibe. You know the warbling song right before Chucky pops out and takes a life. You can almost expect the clown from IT to be serving up soft serves from this truck. Probably not the most inviting image. To add to the creepiness, the vehicle isn't even a truck but is literally a white van driving very slowly through a neighborhood to lure passers-by. And at the end of the video, it seems one is lured as a person comes running over to order from the creepiest ice cream van ever. YouTuber Lynn writes in the comments, If animals act weird around this sort of thing, it's definitely haunted. The rat nest adds, And the people who posted this were never seen again. One thing's for sure, this evil tune should never exist. Next time you're confronted by voices in a haunted house, you should probably just skip town. Redditor Alex underscore Paranormal TV posted the scary paranormal investigation to the Chills Narrator subreddit. It was originally posted on YouTube in February of 2020. The house being explored is a Coal Harbor house in London. As Alex Paranormal explains, we investigate the Cold Harbor house that no one wants to live in because of the extreme activity and what resides inside the Shadow Man. The exploration turns up loads of paranormal activity. At 8.53 in the video, Alex mumbles something as they're exploring, to which a disembodied voice answers, Yeah. A little later, after setting up the spirit box, it either moves or falls over on its own at 16 minutes 7 seconds. Well, it's coming through stuff, mate. Do you smoke that? No. Oh, mate. It's not the mud on the deck. Who are you? A short time after, at 16 minutes 55 seconds, an evil laugh occurs as the team attempts to speak with the spirits. Is this your room? Where are you? The laughter occurs again at around 22 minutes 9 seconds. <laughs> and at 22 minutes 49 seconds, a grunt can be heard. You just grunt then? Who was that? Was that you? As they're talking about the grunt, a very audible knock sounds on the adjacent door at 23 minutes 35 seconds. They continue to explore the haunted house. While well, they're in a hallway, about to enter another room, a door slams at 26 minutes 55 seconds. Oh, hold Slaps on the Was that you? No. Continuing in their exploration after a while, they discover an old Tonka truck in a room. When one guy asks if that's an old Tonka toy, a disembodied voice at 31 minutes 52 seconds answers, yeah. Look at that. That's an old Tonka toy, isn't it? A number of other disembodied voices are noted throughout the video, as if the house was whispering a secret to them. If only they'd just listen. What was it trying to tell them? And what would you do in a house that talks to you? I'd just move out. Morgan Adams is a popular YouTuber who doesn't ordinarily focus on paranormal content at all. So when she recently suspected that her house was haunted, you know I had to take a look. Let's go over the evidence and see if her suspicions are correct. She claims to hear tapping and scratching on the walls, which could be an animal, but then there's whispers too. When this happens, she uses Snapchat and almost always detects a second face nearby. She has named the spirit Angie and it seems to have become quite attached. Angie often responds to her own name. Angie! Oh my god! Angie, you have a lot of new friends that would like to say hi. Oh my god! 
though Snapchat could be mistaking the shelf behind her for a winking face, and these two objects on the wall for eyes. Angie typically lurks around the corner of the house reserved for overnight visitors. Coincidentally, the same area where her dog Ollie absolutely refuses to go. Even with the promise of a treat, Ollie will only allow himself to go so far before he refuses to budge. Some dogs have trouble keeping their balance on hardwood floors and can actually develop a fear of them over time. I thought that could be Ollie's deal because he puts one paw on the wood and stops at 9 minutes and 8 seconds, but at 8 minutes and 52 seconds he has no problem walking on the same type of floor, so that can't be why. I think Morgan Adams could be giving a verbal command for Ollie to sit when she says okay at 9 minutes and 8 seconds. You tell me if Ollie is doing a trick or if he senses something and is too nervous to go forward. <gasps> come on, okay, come on. I don't think it's fake because then she tells him to come on and he still won't move. And when Morgan gets to the end of the hall, she hears a noise and shudders. <sighs> Plus, Ollie isn't the only animal acting weird. Her cat will freeze at the door like someone is on the other side, and Morgan even hears knocking sometimes. Cut it out right now. Stop! There's never anything there, and yet the cat stares at the wall as if something has its attention. I'm gonna freak out if you don't stop. So, oh my god, oh my god, there's orbs, literally. An orb of light also flies in the direction that her cat is staring. Odd indeed. Oh, and there's also this strange Snapchat photo taken in the middle of the night. It could be something photoshopped, but I see something more to it. To the left of the shadow person, I see a face on the wall, and another peeking out from behind the covers. It almost looks like the exact same from a photo taken at the mountain pass where Angie the Spirit first followed Morgan home. And if you're wondering where Angie is in the photo, check out Morgan's shoulder. The dark hair is not hers. Finally, one night, her dad lets it slip that the property was built near an old burial ground. Tell me if you think he is telling the truth here or not. Do you think our house is haunted? Nope. The way he pauses and looks away makes me think he could have been trying to avoid saying anything that could make his daughter worry any more than she already has been. So is all of this real or fake? I'm 50-50 on this one, so your opinions will help me decide. What would you do if you heard a voice tell you to get out of your home? Published to YouTube by X Hauntings in July of 2015, the uploader explains that she was filming her basement after finishing some work on it, not expecting anything paranormal to occur, although she does claim the house is extremely haunted. She writes, The first clip is of the green thing zipping past me. It came from another room through the door, and at the same time you hear a scream sound. right after you see a bright yellow orb, and then dozens of them burst right in front of my face. It certainly sounds as though something shouts at her to get out. The growling is creepy in the flash of yellow light. The orb can't easily be explained away. What do you think is happening in this basement? Would you heed this ghostly warning? This is the last thing you would want to see in the middle of the road at night. Published to YouTube by Christian Garcia in October of 2017, this clip is titled Witch on the Road. The footage shows a motorcyclist driving on dirt roads in the middle of the night. After a time, he comes across a person sitting on the side of the road in the darkness. The person is wearing blue pants, a white shirt, and has gray hair. She doesn't look up, even with the headlights of the motorcycle spotlighting her. The cyclist takes off, but then decides to turn around again. They approach the witch, say hello and ask what her name is. When they receive no real response, Hola, señora. they drive off into the night, leaving this person, or witch as they say, in the darkness on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere. What would you do in just such a situation? YouTuber Mario Batanker2 writes in the comments, Ghost or non-ghost, it's always a little disquieting if not disturbing. A being in a place so far dark and alone. I think this video generates more sensations than many super elaborate videos that come up in such situations. What sensations do you feel? I feel terrified. Here's a scary basement we should all probably get out of. 
published to YouTube by an everyday Canadian in April of 2016. The Canadian says in the clip he heard a banging in the basement that wasn't the washer or dryer. Oh. His kids are asleep upstairs, and he's freaked out about the sounds coming from below. As he heads downstairs to the unfinished basement, you hear immediately what he's talking about. A loud bang in the darkness is heard off to his right. Still, he continues to descend. After turning his light on, he scans the room. The light catches a small toy shopping cart in one corner of the room that's apparently not supposed to be there, judging by the man's reaction. The little cart then starts moving on its own before zooming across the room towards him. What the f was that? What the f this is where the video ends abruptly. We hope that the everyday Canadian made it out alive. Can you imagine being a medical agent right now, forced to enter a lockdown territory? That's what this video apparently portrays, posted by Spicy Rice Photography to the scary subreddit. The video shows the agent entering a dark and deserted apartment block. His walkie-talkie apparently has gone dark on his end. You can hear other agents, but he doesn't speak into it. Jerry, it seems our comms are broken. I can't hear a word they're saying. He opens the door to an empty bathroom. Nothing untoward there. Next, he opens the door to an empty room. All that's inside is what appears to be a square red mat on the floor. A light source spotlights the mat. As the agent continues to breathe, laboriously in the darkness, correspondents are regularly heard on the walkie-talkies. Suddenly, the agent starts to panic even more. Jerry, your heart rate is spiking again. Is there anywhere you can let me know if you're okay? His legs start moving and kicking, and in the darkness you can see why. The creepy figure of a girl with long black hair dressed in white is creeping toward him. As the agent tries desperately to move away, the girl only continues to slowly approach. The camera falls, white screening for a moment, only to capture one last shot of the girl in white, completely on top of him. While the agent may have been searching for survivors in the darkness, he probably regrets finding this one. Listed as creepy pasta, this is still super creepy. In mythology, jinn are beings that appear in human form and are of a spirit level lower than angels. They have been known to possess humans. It appears one is possessing this boy in this video. An attempt to exercise the demon is being made. As a man chants, the boy sits in a chair beside him, completely out of it. The boy shakes his head, making demonic voices, while the man continues to chant. He starts to rock with the music, his body shaking more and more. The man eventually puts a hand on his head, and the song stops. The boy is gasping for breath. They spray him in the face with a spray bottle of some liquid, perhaps holy water. The man later continues in his chant, patting the boy and moving him around variously. The boy becomes still and quiet for a while. Not long after, you can hear screaming from the other side of the room. Finally, you can see where it's coming from. Another woman, also appearing possessed. Was this boy at last exercised of the jinn, or did it simply just make its way into this other woman's body? At 3.15 p.m. on February the 9th, 2004, a woman named Maura Murray withdrew $280 from an ATM. She looks serious, even frowning perhaps, or maybe I'm looking too deeply into it. Either way, this is the last recorded appearance before she disappeared in a way that's never been explained. Four hours after this video was taken, multiple witnesses saw Maura Murray on the side of the road with a broken down car. A school bus driver pulled over to to help out, but she told him that she had already called AAA, even though phone records later revealed that she hadn't, and so he left her alone, but not before reporting the bizarre experience to the police himself. When the cops arrived 20 minutes later, they found some of her personal belongings were in the car, but missing were her credit cards and cell phone. Maura Murray herself was nowhere to be found. For some strange reason, she simply wandered away from her vehicle after it broke down. 
None of her credit cards were ever used and her cell phone was not used either, which probably means she didn't make it very far, and yet her body was never found. Police think she might have been planning to take her own life, but if she was planning to do this, then she would obviously have no use for money, so why would she need to take out almost $300 beforehand? Mora appears to be alone in the ATM video so it's likely nobody is making her do any of this. The police have never been able to figure out her motives or if she's still alive. Mora called out of work that day and wrote she was having relationship problems with her boyfriend, but whether this was of her own free will or if someone was making her do this, to cover their tracks remains to be determined and quite possibly never will be properly explained. Nothing else happened for almost 12 years until a rather sinister video was uploaded on YouTube. This video titled Where I Put Mora shows an empty barn in the middle of the woods. A man is laughing over a picture of Mora Murray, but we never do get to see what they look like. Nobody has been able to identify where this barn is or who uploaded this video. It could be a false lead or her actual final resting place. We'll never know for sure, and police, for whatever reason, apparently have stopped trying to find out. These scary stories sound made up until you see the video evidence that goes with it. That's when these scary moments become all too real. Unknown creatures can be startling, but none more so than this one. This clip submitted to the Chills Narrator subreddit by KidRob97, wondering what in the heck this creature is. <laughs> Suggestions in the comments range from a bat to a giant flying squirrel to a Kalago, which is a flying lemur. Knowing what it actually is wouldn't make this footage any easier to watch. The creature is making one of the most agonizing sounds the human ear has ever heard while it bounds across the ground, hopping and unable to fly. The people have somehow caught the animal, which is tethered to a stick. If you've never seen this type of creature up close, this isn't the way you'd want to encounter it. People in the comments wonder if the animal somehow got stuck on this branch. However, the poor creature ended up in this position. I think we can all agree with Lisa's Matrix that this is just heartbreaking. Some ghosts are just plain mean. Posted to the Very Spooky Videos subreddit by a major malfunction, this security footage captures the after hours at a restaurant as waitresses walk through the stockroom cleaning up for the night. The first piece of paranormal evidence you see is the mop and its bucket moving jarringly across the floor. A waitress is seen gathering glasses and plates off the table, returning to the stockroom, where she picks up the mop and brings it back to the restaurant area. Placing it near a table, she starts gathering more plates and glasses, when suddenly her head yanks back, as though some unseen force is pulling her hair. She is pulled off screen and out of sight. This one looks hard to fake. What does this poltergeist want, and why so angry? For all those who work in service jobs, nevertheless, it's 100% terrifying. Nothing like heading out to the old barn in the middle of the night. Posted to the Chills Narrator subreddit by The Comics Man, and originally posted to YouTube in April of 2020 by the channel Me and Some Dudes. Comics Man writes, Thought I saw something at 1 minute 19 seconds. Don't know. Let's take a look and find out. The guy filming sets out to show us his barn at night. He notes that there's a shed full of roosters to the side, and sometimes they go berserk. He says when they do, and he goes to check on them, the door is always open. His theory is that there are bunnies or raccoons living beneath the barn, but how would they open the door? Eugene Krabs in the YouTube comments points out at around 1 minute 18 seconds that something appears to duck down behind the gray thing in the barn. Do you see it? We can only hope it's a raccoon and not something creepier. Franco TV is one of the few ghost hunters I've come across who isn't afraid to investigate solo. In fact, he prefers it. Charging into the middle of the action and staying put is his style. Rarely does he run. On September 7, 2018, Franco TV goes to an abandoned house that's way out in the Florida forest. I can't tell you the exact location, but I can tell you the name. The Edison House. 
What's inside leaves him a sweat-soaked mass. The address is so secret that he had to track down some of the previous owners to find it. And since no one can stand living here for more than a few months, there were plenty of previous owners to choose from. It was accidentally built over a gravesite according to them. And that's all they will say because it's so cursed that just talking about it could possibly bring about years of misfortune. None of this concerns Franco enough to keep him from going inside. Through the condemned door is a trashed interior that fills the investigator with the type of dread that burns stronger with every step. Everything about it feels off and wrong in a way he can't explain. Past a crumbling kitchen is a small kid's room that feels colder than the rest of the house. And as he's reading but not adhering to the simple instructions on the wall. Get out. <laughs> he hears the giggle of a child. The laughter comes from behind him practically in his ear. And he turns against a wall with a mysterious red stain that looks like it's squirted out of someone's neck. Across from him, this witch-like face appears against the window. It's most visible at approximately 3 minutes and 12 seconds, eyes and all. Undeterred, he goes to where it was standing and looks inside the room he was just in. As he's doing this, the same face now regards him through a crack in the doorway at 3 minutes and 40 seconds. It doesn't look like it's part of the door, but I guess it could be. The upstairs is cramped and uncomfortably hot. Down the hall is a red handprint that could belong to a child, except it's too high up on the wall. Perhaps they were struggling with someone trying not to be carried into this room. As Franco stares into the room, dozens of comments point out this figure staring back out at him from within the closet. Just like the far wall says, I couldn't really see anything at first, but when I did, I suddenly wished I didn't try so hard. Something's there. Franco doesn't spend much time in this room because he gets an especially bad feeling. But one thing I noticed was this jet black spirit orb float up towards him and disappear. That's not a bug. The anxiety he gets from the second floor is a little too much, even for him. And look what happens when he goes back downstairs. I'm hearing all sorts of noises everywhere and I don't have no cover at all and I'm in the middle of the forest. So that's kind of like one of the reasons why it's going to be a little bit weird for me because I just, I can't deal with that. This just so happens to be one of the only times he films behind him so maybe this part is set up. Anyway, this was back when a supernatural challenge called Charlie Charlie was popular and so he decides to play around before calling it quits. He sets up two pencils and waits for the ghost to respond. Is there anyone in this house right now? Is there anyone that's up? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I see no string. Do you wish me to leave this area? A closer look under the light at 9 minutes and 17 seconds shows that nothing is tied around the pencil at all. He follows its advice and goes outside. By now, Franco is soaked in sweat and still hearing movements that I don't think he's making up because they sound too far away, deeper in the forest. And uh, from there, from, from there I'm gonna head home. After that, I'm done. I gotta get out of here. Part of him wants to leave, but he knows he has to explore the surrounding property because it's where more spirits roam around their unmarked graves. While staring out into the wilderness, he hears them. It's not traffic because there's no roads out here. And exactly two seconds later, it's accompanied by a voice warning him never to return. Holy Advice that Franco TV decides to take as he walks away from the Edison house with the blank, horrified stare of a man who has been shown far too much. If you didn't like going to school, this video will validate your feelings. Posted to YouTube by Alan Ubig in June of 2018, 
the uploader writes, The ghost of the Victoria School Lagoon was captured on CCTV yesterday at 9 a.m. A man is sweeping the floor, minding his own business, when about 10 feet away, two items which look like standing dustpans glide across the room, moving from one side of the path to the other. No one else is around. The strange thing is that the man cleaning just watches this happen, but doesn't react whatsoever. Maybe he's all too familiar with the Victoria School ghost. Who or what is playing here? Is it something that can be explained? Or is this school undoubtedly haunted? Another dog with something to prove. Posted to YouTube by It's Just Mars in March of 2012, the uploader writes that her dog does this most nights. The clip shows the dog on high alert for five minutes, growling, barking, and whining. At the end of the video, the uploader says that the closet door just opened on its own. The dog appears very upset by this and is pacing around the bed. I really think that the dog was right about everything. There's something unseen in this house. Alone at night in an empty school? Nothing to fear, right? Wrong. Posted to the Ghosts subreddit by Bartholomew Blackwell. The Redditor states that he was working solo in a school that was shut down and empty when he heard a sound in the hallway. <laughs> the power had been put out by a storm the previous night, and with his flashlight on, he started recording. What he heard was haunting. In the dark school hallway, you can hear a faint wailing. It doesn't sound like anything recognizable, although Blackwell noted that to him, it sounded like a group crying. Some in the comments say that perhaps it's wind, or maybe even the Doppler effect of a vehicle of some kind, moving past the school at high speed, noting that he too thinks it could be the wind heightened by a lack of power supply noise. Gus2155 admits, as someone who is a custodian at a high school, I've heard some strange noises, but nothing like that. Some think it could be a hive of zombies, others suggest a water pipe is running, or a backup generator might be starting up. At least we know Blackwell got out alive. The grounds where a double life taking has occurred is no place to be at night. The guys in this video learned that the hard way. Published to YouTube by the Valspire family in October of 2017, this ghost investigation has all the right ingredients for fear. A storm, an abandoned house at night in the middle of the woods, and a Ouija board. The host, Aiden, says the house has a super creepy backstory and is said to be haunted. The story goes that two male lovers built a mansion up in the woods. As such things weren't accepted at the time, the men had their lives taken in this home. The suspects received life sentences in 1982, but the fact that the police investigation turned up occult tools and books, along with the macabre decor of the home, turned the event into a media circus. The men were labeled devil worshippers. And now, back to this video. The ghost investigators leave their house at midnight in a storm, planning to arrive at Corpsewood Manor at 3 a.m. They drive into the woods, and then set out on foot on the path, not sure where they are, ready to get lost. They arrive at a fork in the road and finally find their way to the abandoned manor. Aiden hears a grumbling, which he admits may be thunder. I heard like a grumbling, but that might have been thunder. He says that his camera, with its full battery, keeps shutting off every time they attempt to start with the Ouija board. At 3 in the morning, they begin asking the Ouija board if anyone had their life taken there. Nothing happens, but they do hear something in the vicinity. Aiden says that he wants to go check it out and thinks it sounded like someone walking. I heard something over there. Go ahead. Jared is freaked out, hearing another sound in the trees. He thinks it was probably the wind. Dude, I heard something. No, you did not. They decide to leave because Jared can't take it anymore. Can you blame him? Aiden recalls that when he sat at the Ouija board and opened up the portal to the spirit world, he forgot to say goodbye, and he claims that ever since then, weird stuff has been happening. All I know is that place seriously seemed haunted.